announcements, live press conferences, and breaking news on the coronavirus. I'm Elaine Quijano. It's good to be with you. Thank you for joining us. Friends and family honored George Floyd in a memorial service Thursday. Floyd died just over a week ago after an encounter with Minneapolis police officers. Today's service was the first of several planned to honor his memory. A funeral is scheduled for next week in Houston. At Thursday's service, Floyd family attorney Benjamin Crump and Floyd's relatives discussed his legacy. It was just amazing. Everywhere you go, and see people, how they cling to him. They wanted to be around him. You know, George, he was like a general. Every day he walks outside, it'd be a line of people, like just like when we came in, wanting to greet him and wanted to have fun with him. I know him being the strong person he was and seeing everybody come together and just rally around him and extend all of the love and support to our family. And man, we, we, we thankful and grateful and I, I know more than anything, with everybody grieving and hurting, he would want us to feel like we won a championship. Do not cooperate with evil. Protest against evil. Join the young people in the streets protesting against the evil, the inhumane, the torture that they witnessed on that video. We cannot cooperate with e evil. We cannot cooperate with injustice. We cannot cooperate with torture because George Floyd deserved better than that. We all deserve better than that. His family deserved better than that. His children deserve better than that. Meanwhile, we are seeing protests against police violence continue across the country. They are leading to increased scrutiny of tactics used by local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies as they respond to what have been mostly peaceful protests. CBS News has learned that several Democratic lawmakers are demanding information from Attorney General William Barr about federal officers stationed around the nation's capital. They were seen wearing uniforms without departmental insignias and offered few details about which agency they work for. CBS News' Natalie Brand joins me now from Washington. So, Natalie, there are a number of law enforcement agencies working in Washington. Is it unusual for officers to be wearing uniforms that would not easily identify identify the agency they work for. Well, Elaine, it, just the sheer volume of security forces and a variety of law enforcement agencies involved in this response is unusual when you're walking down the street of Washington, D.C., and see officers who uh, don't have clearly identifiable, identifiable badges, also Humvees. I mean, just the, the sheer response, that in and of itself is unusual. But some of these officers who are part of the federal response, who have patches that uh, resist resemble those worn by the Bureau of Prisons uh, riot teams or special operation teams, that has drawn some concern because they are not easily identifiable. And Democratic lawmakers are worried that that could lead with issues to accountability, transparency, the possibility of abuse of power. You can see right now we are in the seventh day of demonstrations outside of the White House right now. Uh, a number of the demonstrators are kneeling to the ground as they've done uh, at various times during the day and across the past few days. This is the peaceful type of protest that everyone wants to see. Uh, but today, the attorney general did hold a news conference uh, speaking publicly for the first time about all of this and saying that his department has observed or has evidence and has made arrests to indicate that what he calls extremist agitators uh, are taking advantage of some of these peaceful protests, and he does not want that to interfere with the message, neither do the demonstrators here, Elaine. Well, Natalie, Democratic lawmakers are calling for an investigation into the deployment of these yeah. unidentified officers. What might that actually look like? 
Well, they've written to the Attorney General and the Department of Justice with a long list of questions uh, to learn more about why these units were sent here, what their exact role is in the response. And one congressman, Don Byer of Virginia, has even said he will write, he plans to write draft legislation around the matter. So Democratic lawmakers want accountability on this. The House Speaker also has written her concerns about not only uh, these special forces brought in uh, to respond to protests and, and what they believe to be violent protests, but also the militarization of this response. Uh, and that's something that the president's own former defense secretary, James Mattis, we saw that scathing statement from him yesterday uh, about the militarization of this response, something really uh, set off by that moment in Lafayette Park on Monday uh, when all the, de the peaceful demonstrators uh, were, were cleared out of this area shortly before the president made his way over to the church right next to where I'm standing. And uh, Natalie, you spoke to demonstrators outside the White House today. Let's go ahead and play some of what one of them had to say. I made this sign. I ran out of room. I ran out of room for the names. I could not fit all of the names of the murdered people on my side. That's a problem. We're done. We're tired. We're not doing this anymore. We don't want any more prayers or thoughts or commissions or investigations. We're done. This is it. This is the line in the sand. We're done. We are done. We're in front of the White House. That's my house. My ancestors built it and my tax, buy it, my tax dollars pay to maintain it. So that's my house. And Natalie, I know you have been there day after day. Um, what is the overall mood of demonstrators today at this moment? Well, we were so fortunate to talk to that demonstrator, Nikki Goodwin, today. Uh, she had a sign with names from Emmett Till to George Floyd. And what she says is this moment feels different, that uh, it appears, as many have been saying, this could be a tipping point uh, to lead to real change. These conversations that are happening here in the street and in the halls of Congress, uh, they are ready for those conversations to escalate into actual policy and results. And that demonstrator, I asked her how long, how many days she's been out here. She said her first day was actually Tuesday, and she was brought out because she heard the president say that he wanted to dominate uh, some of the violent protests, and she said he's not going to dominate the peaceful protests. So she wanted to come out here and make her voice heard, uh, one of the many powerful